Hallelujah. Something is going to happen tomorrow morning. I carry bread. I just remembered. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we are going higher. First service was awesome. This one is going to be more awesome. Amen. So we have in the house our beloved friend, brother, and pastor who has gone through a path. When I was saying this morning that you are going through a path, I didn't know you are going to talk about the path. He's gone through the path of life from the dark side. And God has brought him to the side of light. And he's going to share very profound, outstanding testimony. With Jesus' joy, let's welcome Pastor Chijoke Enenta. I said with Jesus' joy. With Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, just lift up your voice and worship him. Just give him all the praise. Give him all the worship. Just, just thank him. Just say something wonderful. If you are saved by amazing grace, Lift up your voice and just worship him. Just give him all the praise. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. Lift up your voice. You the miracle so great. There is no one else. There is no one else like you. Oh yes. There is no one else like you. You do me. So great, there is no one else. Say it to him, say it to him. service we thank you for the second service we thank you for what you have started we thank you for what you are doing we thank you for the things that you are set to do be thou exalted this is the confidence that we have in you we do not have a priest that is not touched by the feelings of our infirmity father you know us by our name do that which only you can do and take all the glory in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Did you say amen or man? The amen is sounding like man. Amen. If that amen is amen, then shout that amen louder. You can be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I want to thank thank you mama thank you to our father he's not here thank you pastor god bless you please can we celebrate our pastor can we celebrate him celebrate mama hallelujah hallelujah i was sharing something in the first service 
and while I was preparing for today's service or services I told God something that is something that God always will I say does or do because he keeps doing this we were, pre we were preaching in um, Abia Polytechnic while I was just coming down from the, the stage I was just coming down a young man ran he broke the protocol ran straight held my legs he said something he said I am tired of life I, want, I wanted to they wanted to I said they should leave him he said sir I, I, I concluded he brought out some things he said I have made conclusions that after this meeting if nothing happens in my life I will commit suicide he brought out the note he already written and he said while you were ministering I felt God like never before he said I didn't know that God loves me so much sir after the service in fact I found I have a new friend now my friends are not normal people So if you're thinking of being my friend, you, are not, you shouldn't be normal. After the service, I, was, I wanted to go upstairs with my daughter and rest for her. But they called me to the office and said, you need to see somebody. After this service, the first service, to let you know that God is still doing something. A young man brought out his phone and was showing us videos. He said he was one of the people that were, they have been terrorizing Abua and Donnie. They called names. He showed us videos. He said he takes pleasure in killing people. He said he was telling us about an operation they were supposed to kill. He, he beheaded 11. In this same service, he was shedding tears he said i am tired he said while the message was going on somebody invited him somebody just sent him an invite he came and he came out for altar call and god transformed his life see are you clapping or you're rubbing powder There is no other miracle that is more important. Pastor said something. He said there is. He was telling him. He said there is joy in heaven over one. So if we just thank God for this second service and go home, heaven is celebrating. I am a product of grace. So many times I look, at, I stand before God, I stand in the mirror and I ask myself, why did you choose me? I am not supposed to be standing on the altar holding microphone, preaching the word of God. I, I am not qualified want to go through my credentials you will not see any good qualification i am that person that if you look back you will you will you won't find anything to hold on to if you call a young lady now you say tell me what is your ideal man anything she will say i don't fall into that category or i didn't fall into that category He's, I want him tall. I want him handsome. I want him uh, God fear. God fearing. Now God they fear us. There's a difference between God fearing and who God they fear. I read something in the Bible. You know, in the first service, I didn't read the Bible, so it can't look like, say, a town hall meeting 
I read something in the Bible and I want to share with us. The only thing we need to do, God expects, is take a decision. In the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 15. Sorry, Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Luke chapter 15, verse 11. You can have it. And he said, we're going to read through. So let's just try to be fast. And he said, a certain man, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Uh -huh. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And his, he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted, wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. Mm -hmm. and, he's, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the field to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat he was eating with pigs and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself now this is where God this is the only thing that is expected God will not do this part he said, and when he came to himself, I told the young man inside in the office, I told him, you need to take a decision. I, I, I tell people, they say, ah, I serve a God who never fails. I serve, I serve the God of the bad boys. I serve the God that is more interested in my weakness. I serve the God that is more interested in where I have failed. Read the Bible, all the men that God have used mightly are people that didn't qualify. Go back to there, go back to that place. Let's have, let's have it back. And when he came to himself, there must be a time when you will come to yourself. He said, he said, how many hired servants? He said to himself, he was not praying. He was not talking to God. But his thoughts, his imaginations. He said to himself, how many, how many hired servants have my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish here. I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned. I have sinned. I acknowledge my sin. I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Uh -huh. 19. And I'm no more worthy. Forget whether you're worthy or not. To be called your son. Make me as one of your hired servants. This is what he said to himself. And the Bible says something in 20. He said, and he arose. He didn't say it and sat down. There are people that have fought with this thing that you know that has kept you so down. This thing that you know, this habit you know that is not of God that has kept you down. And you say, I will do this. This is January 2023. I will make sure that this year I will focus on God. You have told yourself, but you are still sitting down. The Bible said this, the, 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 the prodigal son, he, he didn't just say to himself, my father has that. My father has this. I will go to my father. He didn't just say that. The Bible said he arose. He stood up. Listen, if you don't stand, God cannot do anything. If you don't get up, God will not do anything. Even the Bible, when, the, when, God, when God raised the man from the, 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 the leprous man, when God raised him up, sorry, the paralyzed man, when God, the Bible, God told him, said, rise up, take up your bed and walk if you read the preceding the bible says and he arose in other words if you still stayed there it is not of jesus's business jesus has done his own 
when Jesus met Lazarus, the Bible says, uh, lose him. Uh, Jesus prayed for him. He said, Lazarus, come forth. When Lazarus came forth, Jesus said, lose him and let him go. If they had not loosed him, it is Jesus, it's not of Jesus' business. He has done his business. So he takes divinity and humanity for the supernatural to come alive. I say it again. It takes divinity and humanity for the supernatural to come alive. Don't don't just don't just don't just don't just be comfortable with the decisions you have made. Rise and make sure that it comes to pass. I'm going somewhere. Go back to go back to that, that verse, please. And he arose and came to his father. Now these are this is where his walk stopped. He took a decision. He said to himself, I will go. He arose and went to his father. This, that was where his walk stopped. The father took it up from there. And he arose and came to his father. But, but, when you see but, it nullifies every other thing you have done. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. He didn't see the father. The father saw him. If he hadn't risen up, the father wouldn't have seen him. If he hadn't taken that decision, the father wouldn't have seen him. The Bible says when the father saw him afar off, his father and had compassion that the father saw him one had compassion two ran to him three and fell on his neck four and kissed him five the father did all these things for him i believe he just took a decision and went there the father saw him and the father took it up from there and and the son said, Father, I have seen that against heaven and in their sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, How does he turn out of it? Bring! Am I talking to somebody? The father went ahead. I'm not, I'm not, this thing you're telling me is not what I want to hear. The fact that you have taken the decision to be here is enough. But the father said unto his servant, Bring forth the best, the best. In other words, what he was wearing as a father bring the one that is even more than this one bring the best robe put on, put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet cover him take off this garment of shame take off this garment of failure take off this garment that he put upon himself but because he came to his realization, this garment is not my own. But I cannot take it off. All I need to do is to go to my father. And when he got there, they took off the garment. They replaced the garment. They said, bring a ring. He lost his authority when he left and went for, to a far country. Bring a ring and put in his hands. He belongs to the palace. He's not a slave. He's a king. Then, there was no shoe in his leg. He left with shoes. But he came back with no shoes. Put the shoe on his leg. So that his steps will be ordered by God. Can we go back there? He didn't end there. And bring hither the fat dead calf. Kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this, my son, was what? Long ago. And is alive again. He was lost. And he is found. And they began. What did he do? He took a decision. God is waiting for you to take that decision. My life is a testimony. 
God saved me, yes. But it came to a point where I had to take a decision. I was addicted to so many vices. I was telling them in the office, the pastors in the office, I said, I don't, I don't, I, I usually don't like cigarettes, alcohol, because of my upbringing. Because if you smoke, my dad was a chain smoker, so if he sees a smoker, he knows. So, if you smoke, he will know. So, I wasn't smoking. I was injecting myself with hard drugs. For those of us that were not here in first service, I said, my name is Chijoke Enenta. I'm the son of Pastor Edward Enenta. My father was the state overseer in Deeper Life in River State. My father started Deeper Life in Bayasa. My father started deeper life in so many places in then it was Yenegua with River State. My father in Oibo, he started a, a lot of branches. He was into church planting in River State. So I grew up, if you if you if you deeper life, then you know what I'm talking about. A family that understands God, a family that knows God, a family that preaches God. There's nothing in the Bible, everything my father wanted to do, he would quote the scripture anytime my father wants to flog you he will open the scripture it's in the bible now the bible said the rod is for the fool's back train up a child in the way he should go and my father will say the bible said rod the bible didn't say cane my father uses rod I'm not kidding he will beat you until you see angels. It got to a point where you, you, could, you, could, you could feel God when you come to my house. We didn't have television. Of course, you know. Television, that time, nothing. It was called Satan Box. You only permitted to have radio, and it must be full battery. If it's more than four battery, now you know what you want here. Because you are only permitted to hear news and things happening in the country. So we didn't have the flavorities of life. We were only concerned with the things of the spirit. You wake up in the morning, you have to cover two, two chapters of the Bible every day. It's not just read and drop, you cram it. That is why now, when I, when I preach, I try not to quote Rema. I try not to go into deep realms. It has deceived a lot of Christians. Rema is good. But it has deceived a lot of Christians. Because a man comes cramming scriptures and begin to vomit it. And you say, wow. He goes back home helpless, sinful. I grew up in a family where values were upheld to the core. You don't use words like you're an idiot, a fool. Don't fire you there. God punish you. You see it in families now. In fact, father cause children, children cause mother. Is in the family. It's a normal thing. You can use cause to greet themselves. They crazy. They crazy. If they get angry, now now you go no say me. I know where. Are they mad? It is. It is. You cannot. It is. It is a taboo. It is an aberration to use such words. But listen to me. We grew up in that light. The devil was still interested. Children of God, I beg you, as much as we serve God in spirit and in truth, as much as we want the best out of our families and out of our lives, as much as we want the best out of our children, I want to beg you, take it as a point of duty to monitor the activities in your house. 
there are things that are happening in your house that you need to understand when it happens don't take it for granted there are people that God puts burden in your heart to wake up and pray in the midnight and you think it's just mosquito that is biting you know God is about God is about to reveal something that you need to know the Bible said it was when they when 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 Paul set fire upon the wood in the book of Acts that the viper came out the viper was there nobody knew until the fire came it is the fire the altar of fire you raise in your home that will reveal the viper the devil is out there looking for who to take you might be too mature for the devil no problems the devil might go for your own child the devil might go for your seed of course the bible says he that breaketh the edge the serpent will bite so the devil comes to look for who and sees it leaked in your no wonder the bible said that job he comes to himself and he, he, he prepares sacrifices of atonement for his children. Perhaps they might have sinned against God. He didn't take it for granted. My dad would go to church. And all of us, we follow, we go to church. We serve God, we worship God. Like every other person. But there were evil intentions. I was coming out of me i was not the best in school i was not the best i didn't there was nothing good you will call me out and you say this guy is good in this it must be attached to evil i'm a top down black belter why did they go to learn martial arts to beat people people that did not do me anything the devil wants to take advantage of everything good in your life. I brought pain, shame and disgrace to my home. I was a regular in the police station. My mom would come. What happened? Where is she okay? In the cell. She will leave everything she wants to do. The cooking she wants to do. She will start looking for a way to go to the station. They have looked for me one day. Look for me. Look for me. Look for me. Even in the mortuary. Why? I just disappeared from the house. Came back after how many days? I was the kind of child that you never pray to have. Oh, awesome. I saw how they brought the children out. Ah, God bless these children. I was also brought out. Dedicated before God. Dance, celebrated. My mother, my, they prayed that I come to life. They prayed that I come as a child. They had the first son, the first, the second son, and it looked like I, I delayed a bit. And they prayed, and God gave them another fruit of the womb. And when I was delivered, oh, they celebrated. I was the first child that came with a uh, baby bed. And baby, uh, yeah. That's in the rap picking. You know already. They don't use pampas for us. Now pieces they use. For my brothers. But oh, they use napkin. You know napkin? Mami, we are first we are napkin for my home. Achievement. They did everything to bring me up in the word of the Lord. But listen to me. There is another side of me that the devil is interested in. You might be listening to me now. Anytime you want to do good, evil is present with you. Anytime you set your heart to do right, Satan comes and brings a, 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 a slimmer and easier option. I have told God I will never sleep with any man until I meet my husband. I will never sell myself. I will never do this. I will never do that. Just like, just as we have made that decision. That is when every man will want to call you. That is when all the friends that you know, you open Facebook, bah, they are there. 
Hi, honey. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, my baby. Hi, this one. You enter Instagram. God for blood of Jesus. You run into this one. God, God, the devil bondage. You go every time they are chasing you. Listen, that is the devil presenting it to you. Sending you the color of sin. Just as the devil is interested in you, God is also interested in you. I've asked myself, why is the devil always interested in what God is interested in? The devil does not go for a non-entity. The devil does not go for a man or a woman that oil is not on his head or her head. The devil is not interested in anyone that does not terrorize his kingdom. You have a child here, you have, you, have, you, have, you have a sibling or something, or somebody that you know that this person is talented, but the person is not going into the way of the Lord. Or you might even be the one I'm talking about. Listen, you are in a battlefield. There are two powers contending to have you. The prodigal son, the Bible said, he came to himself. He decided to take a decision. And he didn't just take it, he arose. I, I entered school like every I I went to six secondary six, six secondary schools in six years. You shock you? You shock me too. First term, second term, pa, I'm out. Third term, first term, I'm out. Second term, third term, pa, I'm out. Just like that. And every school I went to, I left a negative report. This thing that family used to say, don't go there and drag the family name to the mud. Uh, I carried the mud home. <laughs> Sorry, that's how I preach. You'll be laughing. I'm not laughing. It's not funny. If you have a child doing these things to you, you know that it's not funny. My father, there was no time. I'm not exaggerating. There was no time I saw my father sat down with me and we are having a conversation and we are happy. No time. No time. Apart from after I give my life to Christ and things change. No time. There was no time I sat down. You know, father and son. My, my, my son was here on Tuesday. I, I brought with, Today I came with the twin sister. Daddy, I want to go with you. Mommy, I want to go down. Eh? How? And I come back to the house. And my father comes back to the house and I run to, to do what? To hug my father. There was no relationship. Because light was there. Darkness was there. Before his eyes, the devil has taken his son. Every time I want to do right, evil was present with me. Every time I said to myself, today, I will be honest. Today, I will, I will try and, and do right. I will live righteous. Immediately, I just finished saying that. The devil shows up. I didn't know who was pushing me. But I knew that something was pushing me and I didn't like it. There are some of you here listening to me. There are times you want to serve God. You want to, you have told yourself. You used to pray and God shows up. You used to do this, you used to do that. All of a sudden, it begins to die. That is the devil. The Bible says, at very last time shall come that the love of many shall was cold. That is the devil taking, being a substitute in your life. He's taking those things you love and putting those things you don't love inside you and making you love them unconditionally. I did everything I could. I left even, listen, I was, I was, was I was, sent, I was a Okay, the former Saul. I will know, I will know that they want to have a service in church. Ah, God. There are some things you do and you can't believe you did those things. I will lock, sir, I will lock the church. I will lock. I will come inside the church, lock the door, 
from inside the main door lock hide the key I will follow them and be looking for the key and they will now this they try 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 big 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 you know protect us and everything let's just have fellowship here they will just have fellowship some people will frustrate us some people will go and I will be happy Some people will come to the house. I want to see pastor. I want to see pastor. I want to see pastor. Pastor day, oh. Pastor no day. Pastor don't travel. That one will go back frustrated. I thought I come here. Ah, somebody came to me. He said, ah, what? I, I had somebody say, you want to see pastor. Ah, I tell him, I said, make him wait. He said, no fee wait. He don't go. I was a pain in the body of Christ. Why didn't God kill me? grace why did God love me so much why did he kill it's, I did so many things that God would just take bah, take this guy out and let the, let the work go God said no keep him the encounter I had I don't think any other thing would have changed my mindset about God one day I didn't say this in the first service one day I was in school I'm trying to cut this out. One day I was in school and they came. Some bad boys, they came. Bah, hey, what's going on? My roommate was there. He said, they said, where is, where is the senator? Then the senator, what is he coming? Where is the senator? He said, he's inside. He said, bah, they entered the room. They scattered everywhere. And I was inside the room, sleeping. He said, where is the senator? They came out, they, they stopped, my roommate, they stopped his hand. They wanted to, they wanted to choke him. He now put his hand. They said, where is the senator? They said, in this side, in this side. They wanted to just hit me quick and go. When I, when I say hit, they wanted to just kill me and go. So they come, where is the senator? They in this side, They came inside. Sir, I was lying down. I was sleeping. They turned the house downside up. They checked everywhere. I checked, checked. And they came out and they warned my roommate. They said, if we are coming back, if we don't see him, we will take you. My roommate went back. Because what they did was when they were leaving, because of people who were gathered and they shot gun and they ran away. So when they ran away, people came out. They said, What's the problem? They came into the room. They saw me. I was lying. They, they started hitting me. I woke up. I said, What's the problem? They said, Where were you? I said, I was, I was sleeping. What kind of question is that? They said, Some men came. I wouldn't have believed them if I didn't see the, 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 gun, the gunshot where the, where the bullet went to. And they came into the room. They scattered the place. And they left the room. They didn't see me. Why? A woman was on her knees. Praying. A woman that I caused pain. That I brought shame and disgrace. My mother told me after some years. She said, let me tell you. Do you know we were praying for you to die? I held hands with your father and we prayed. We gave birth to you. With this, my womb, I carried you for nine months. I dedicated you in church. I gave you everything that pertains to life. And you grow up to cause us pain. Chijo, okay, may you sleep and never wake up. Prayers, my father and my mother, they prayed about for me. Pastor said, Pastor was praying a prayer. And I, I say amen to that prayer. He said, Open your hands. Say, so Use your hands. You will not bury your children. I say, Amen. My father was ready to bury me. He couldn't wait to, to dig ground. Is that his body? Put him inside. Do you know I was in that same family. I lost my elder brother. My immediate elder brother. He died. I lost two of my younger brothers. They died. For no reason. One was just sick. The other one was, I don't know, sick or so. Died. The other one died mysteriously. Why my mother looked at them and said, Why didn't God take you, this boy? Why didn't God take you? That is how painful. Listen, we are in a world where the devil is out. The devil is not concerned about your office. That you are anointed and you are a pastor or you're a bishop or whatever you are. The devil, you know they, you know they fear the 
the devil met Jesus after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. With all the anointing and the grace, the devil told him, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to be bread. Listen, I am not here to tell you stories. I only came to let you know that Jesus is real. He is still doing things in our lives. Everything they promised me, I joined God at the age of 14. As a young boy, pastor was saying something in the first service. He said, there are secondary schools now. There are, it, it's not just secondary schools. Primary 5, primary 6. They have started. Now they don't even need to beat you to join. They can dash you money and say join. I, I get calls from children 11, 12, 13 years. Some of them, their parents call me. And they say, my son came back from boarding school and began to behave strange. A young boy, I said this on Tuesday, a young boy called me from Kenya. He's a Nigerian boy, he lives in Kenya. He called me, I think it was 13 or 14 years. He called me and said, sir, I want to speak with you. I just watched your, your video. I said, okay, what's the problem? He said, I think, he said, I think I am homosexual. I said, how? He said, right now, I, I love my fellow boys. I don't have any, I don't like to stay around girls. I love to peep boys when they are bathing. I said, how did it happen? He said, his father, he was, his father was just on his phone, left. So he came and took the phone. And while he was watching the video, the father was watching pornography. So while he was watching the site, the uh, what's it called? Um, the homosexual whatever site came up. Okay. He came up, and when he came up, he said some it was like a spirit entered him. And that was it. I could go on and on. A woman said she is addicted to snuff. She can't do anything else. She, she takes snuff. The devil is out there. But listen to me. God is out there looking for who to take a decision and to rise. My encounter started when I was in school. I was in the hostel. And two boys came. My friends came. and said, let's go out. I followed them. And immediately I followed them. I didn't know where they were taking me to. But I followed them. My friends and we got to a junction and when we got there they brought out a gun a six round revolver and they said go on your knees i said why these are my men they said go on your knees as i was trying to negotiate with them they hit me i came down in i was still in shock i was still surprised and they said, say your last prayer. We want to give you the last honor. If I said, why do you want to kill me? They said, because if you go down, I will be promoted. Two of them, they stood beside me. My friends, the devil will not come to you with people you don't know. They come with you with people you know. And I was trying to negotiate with them. But I knew that it has come to that point. I closed my eyes. I couldn't call Jesus because I don't know him. I couldn't pray because I don't know how to pray. I just said something. I said, Father, for the sake of my mother, hear her. Deliver me. If you save me now, if you save me now, the world will hear this testimony. While I was praying, I was crying. I was expecting the bullet to go off. And I heard the voice stand up move and don't look back I didn't understand because I'm not used to the voice of God I heard the voice again stand up move and don't look back I stood up I didn't see those boys I was the only one standing and I said probably they were in the bush waiting for me to pass so that they can release fire that was the longest journey I took 
I walked down and got to the hostel. I saw two of them sitting down and asked them, what's the problem? Why did you do what you did? They said, we put the gun on your head. We shot it twice. He said, he didn't shoot. I was trying to understand. They said, we tried to cock the third one. We tried to check the gun because it was all come made. We tried to check it and know what? So two men came out and they told us, if you don't leave now, you will die. So they ran away and left me there. Children of God. That was how I knew that Jesus is real. That was how everything they said concerning God came to my mind. Everything I have told God began to play. I beg you. I want to pray with you. Please can we rise on our feet. This message is not to make you emotional. It's only to bring to your knowledge there is a, a, a thin line between life and death. If you find yourself in my position or if you find yourself in that kind of position, are you sure, are you sure that if you close your eye in death, you will meet with God or you will meet a voice that will say depart from me you walk out of iniquity it's not about my office it's not about who I am it's not about my office. I want to beg you the program is swag saved with amazing grace we are saved by his grace I am a product of grace whoever you are perhaps you have a child that is a thorn in your flesh and you want God to show up in his matter you are here you want to give your life to Christ you are not sure of your salvation if you die now you are not sure of heaven please wherever you are just come to the altar and let's settle this my time is up already so I'm not going to waste time on this whoever you are whoever you are whoever you are whoever you are the Bible says that the prodigal son took a decision and he arose and that was where his work stopped and the father took off and did every other thing whoever you are you have a child that you're trusting God for a transformation in his life or you are that child and you want to say God I don't want to go through this anymore I want to stay with you I want to enjoy the life the guy we were talking to in, uh, in the office he said something he said he's tired I asked him one question I said all this while you have been doing this what have you achieved he said nothing that is what they deceived me with but ever since I gave my life to Christ I have enjoyed God in a tremendous way I have taken my mother and my father to places they never imagined to enter in this life. I've taken my dad abroad and, and given him the, the, the treatment that he may never experience in his lifetime. I have taken my mother to places that she may never experience in the life. God is using me to transform the situation. That is what God wants to do with you. Whoever you are, please. If I have one person, oh God, I'm so done. If I have one person, I will say, Lord, I want to, I want to do this with you over and over again. I'm going to count to five, and when I'm done, we're good. Whoever you are, the Lord is speaking to your heart. Come, 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 come. When the die is cast, nobody will stand beside you. It is only Jesus. Why not come to him now? I count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Brother, open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Ask God to come into your life.
Now listen to me. Listen, look up here, sir. Look up here. There is life in Christ. There is life in Christ. If I know or I knew what I know now, it would be a lot more better. I want to welcome you into, into this kingdom. Into this sweet secret, not secret, into this sweet cult. In our cult, we don't drink the blood of human beings or children or animal. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I am sorry. I know I have sinned against you. Have mercy upon me. Forgive my sins. Say, I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died on the cross of Calvary and you rose on the third day. Say, Heavenly Father, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Save me because I can't save myself. Now say thank you Jesus for saving me. In Jesus name. Say amen. Father I thank you for this once. There is joy in heaven over one. But I present this once before you. Give them the grace to live above sin and temptations. In the name of Jesus kill every appetite of unrighteousness and increase the appetite for righteousness in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen god bless you amen as we round up this service please pray for yourself can we please all be on our feet the theme of this service is ultimate victory go ahead and say father give me ultimate victory over every works of the devil in my life, in my family. Quickly pray that prayer. If you have children, pray for your children. My children will not be tools in the hand of the devil. As many who have lost their way, Lord, rescue them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you are doing today. I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Your son that you have used to bless us with his testimony, Lord, continue to uphold him, establish him the more. In the name of Jesus, use him to bring multitudes into the kingdom of God. Thank you, everlasting Father, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Let our amen be sharper.